Hmm. Hello, everybody. Hey, YouTube. How y'all doing out there? Hope you're having a good day. Grace and peace multiplied to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Hope everybody's staying strong and uh, thanking God that He allowed us to wake up and see another day with His precious breath of life. Now, today's lesson, I'm not going to be long with it. Today's lesson is talking about something that has been perpetuated throughout the ages of time and this is December so we in that season where you got all this uh, idolatry going on and many of us cuz I you know I grew up in it many of us uh, don't know what we doing you know until we come into a certain level of understanding we don't know that this world is predicated on idolatry and paganism and on top of that they are <laughs> merchandising you basically you know we get all geeked up you know when a certain uh, month of the year come around and <laughs> you know you see all these different decorations and it has nothing to do with God so this lesson is called the Queen of Heaven and I'm going to show you in the scriptures as well as world history that the Queen of Heaven is still being worshipped to this day and people don't even know it. So turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19 and I'm going to begin with verse 13. Verse 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. What? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what? Uh, peep game though. Verse 14. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know. And Paul I know, but who are ye? <laughs> and the man in whom the evil spirit was was leaped on them and overcame them. Whoa, <laughs> whooped them up and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Mm. Verse 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified so you got you got to do it right you get all in all out uh, verse 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds many also of them which used curious arts whoa what's that witchcraft the Lord don't like witchcraft say so many of them many also of them which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver that's a lot of money <laughs> to be doing witchcraft <laughs> verse 20 so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed we should be saying that today shouldn't we now uh, skip down to verse 23 and the same time there arose no small stir about that way and this is talking about the right way the true way Verse 24, for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana. Whoa, who was Diana? I'm going to show you. Brought no small gain unto the craftsman. So he was making big money. <laughs> Verse 25, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. See, made big money off of it. Uh... Verse 26, more will ye see in here that not, not alone in Ephesus, but also throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, turned away much people from these pagan idolatry things, right? Saying that they be no gods which are made with hands. That's true. <laughs> that is true. That is a fact. You got your little doll sitting right there and you bound down to it or you worshiping? 
<laughs> that ain't gonna save you. <laughs> Tell that doll to save you out of your trouble. Tell that doll, doll to save you out of your finances. You know, when you get in debt, it ain't gonna do nothing. <laughs> Verse 27. So that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Now, skip down to verse 35. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Hmm. So the whole city is about idolatry. <laughs> we got, I, we, it's close, but we probably got some cities real close to being like that today. Go, go, go to any city, any city or state in the United States. And you will find, as soon as you come to town, you will find what? A gigantic pagan cross. Somewhere. <laughs> and, and in some neighborhoods, they right next door to each other. Up and down the streets. I did a lesson about that uh, one time. You know, pagan crosses everywhere. I might post a link to that too. Just to show you a quick example. It ain't long. About two, three, five minutes. But also, you can go in a deep, dark, parts of Africa and see the same thing. What you gonna see? That big pagan cross. But the Lord say don't, in the, the first commandment is don't, don't, don't worship no other gods but me. Right? You know what I'm saying? So now, uh, go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 18. Revelation 18. Beginning with verse 3. I mean, no, beginning with verse 1. Revelation 18 and 1. 1 through 3. Yeah, 1 through 7 total. Revelation chapter 18, beginning with verse 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Ain't that clear? Still ain't nothing changed today. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. <laughs> That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. Mm, sinning big time. It doesn't reach all the way to heaven. And God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. And the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, mm, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Mm. <laughs> but in future days, <laughs> she's going to be brought down. Now, she said, I, in verse 7, it said, I sit a queen. Turn to Isaiah 47. Turn to the Old Testament, Isaiah 47. Two verses here, verses seven and eight. Isaiah 47, verses seven and eight. Verse seven. And thou says, I shall be a lady forever. Whoa, who is this talking? <laughs> the same one, ain't it? That Babylon the Great. <laughs> I shall be a lady forever so that thou didst not Lay these things to thy heart, neither did us remember the latter end of it. Because the latter end of it, that she going to be cast down and destroyed. Verse 8. Therefore hear now this, thou that 
art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thy heart, I am, and none else besides me, I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Puffed up too, huh? Like nobody can stop her. Nobody can take her down. Uh, for sake of time, I'm going to go to this history book right quick. This is Unger's Bible Dictionary. Unger's Bible Dictionary, page 905. And this is talking about what else? The Queen of Heaven. It says, Astarte. Who? Another name for Astarte is Astara, Eoster, and Easter. And Semeraris, but I'm going to get into that later. Uh, Ast Astarte, an ancient Semitic deity identical with Babylonian Ishtar. That's it. That's the one I forgot, Ishtar. <laughs> or, and they got in parentheses, Venus. It says, see false gods. The epithet of heaven alludes to her astral character. Special cakes were baked to this goddess uh, with which they, there may be some connection, which were symbolic representations of the goddess. Her worship belonged chiefly to the women. Mm, Jeremiah 44, verse 17. Astarte representing the female principle of fertility, hmm. which means reckless abandoned sex. She was a mother goddess. Hmm. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Uh, let me see. Turn to Zephaniah. Well, you might be. Able to well, that's that's sometimes that's hard to find. Go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter seven. And this will be last, so this will be a part two. I don't want to hold y'all. Jeremiah seven, beginning with verse eighteen. The children gather, gather wood. No, 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 no. Let me start with verse seventeen. See, is thou not what they do in the cities of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? Because I read in Revelation that all nations have drank of her cup. So even Judah, even the, even the chosen was doing this. And still today. It says, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Verse 18, The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And the woman need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. Whoa! Worshiping another god. A false god. A pagan god. <laughs> and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods. That they may provoke me to anger. Whoa. <laughs> Do they provoke me to anger? Saith the Lord. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Verse 20. Therefore thus saith the Lord God. Behold my anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast and upon the trees of the field and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Mm. Lord piss, because everybody want to serve pagan fake gods, but don't want to serve the true and living God that will give you blessings more abundantly. Mm, mm, mm. So that's the end of the lesson for now. So be, be watching for part two coming soon. Grace and peace multiply to you and yours and knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High God, the Savior to those that keep His commandments. Peace.